Hey guys, let's get more news about Lakers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Paul George's dad reveals LeBron James, Lakers' desire after leaving Clippers. While the Los Angeles Clippers were hopeful to retain Paul George in free agency, it quickly became clear that George would be on the move. Paul George's father thought he actually could join LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. Following months of failed negotiations between the Clippers and George, the nine-time NBA All-Star agreed to a four-year, $212 maximum contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. The deal was quickly agreed upon in the first few hours of free agency following Paul George's meeting with the Clippers to inform them of his plans. On the latest episode of Podcast P with Paul George, the Sixers star had his father on, where he said he thought there was a chance his son would move to the crossdown rival Los Angeles Lakers and team up with LeBron James. I was looking at okay, well we're gonna do next door then, to the Lakers, but they already spent too much money, George Sr. said on Podcast P, I thought we're gonna still come down in the tunnel, just gonna be wearing a different color. The Lakers had no way to outright sign Paul George, and getting him to LA's other team would have required a complicated sign-and-trade scenario where multiple players are moved. That was never even in serious consideration, as the Sixers moved quickly to reach an agreement with Paul George. His father adds that he felt the Clippers stabbed him in the back with their contract offer. It was hurting, Paul George Sr. added of his son's decision to leave Los Angeles. I felt like they stabbed us in the back because I thought Paul did a whole lot for the team, as far the fan base, the fans was there. He was there. I think he gave them 110% and what he was asking, it wasn't a whole lot. But they saw something different. Paul George agreed to a four-year, $212 million deal, which was more than the Clippers' offer of a three-year deal worth roughly around the range of $150 million. Their offer was similar to that of Kawhi Leonard's, George's former teammate. George, who initially wanted the four-year, $220 million max deal, expressed interest in returning to the Clippers on that similar deal, but wanted a rare no-trade clause in the deal to ensure he wouldn't be moved shortly after. The no-trade clause was never on the table nor was the max, which meant George felt forced to depart with the best interests of himself and his family at the forefront of his decision. I didn't want him just to take anything, Paul George's dad explained. So his whole thing is, he does stand up for what he believes in. And so he felt that that was a bunch of bull that they came at him with. And I wasn't gonna sugarcoat it either. Yeah, I'm behind you 100%. If you've got to leave, we're gonna leave. Of course, it kind of put us in a little bump and grind, but it's all good. It's all good. You love being at home, but then sometimes home can kind of slow you down. He put in work for it and I felt that he should have gotten paid for it. And so we didn't stutter about it. Like what, they came at you like this? Oh nah, you've got to go. He ain't the best defender. Luka Donic rumored trade to the Lakers has its reservations from former NBA champion. The Los Angeles Lakers one day would be without the services of superstar LeBron James. Interestingly, Dallas Mavericks' Luka Donich has been revealed to be his successor. That brought a level of excitement to everyone in the purple and gold fan base, but not to former champion, Robert Horry. The former champion wasn't too excited because a Donich trade comes with its baggage, in terms of defensive struggles. However, he acknowledged what he brings to the offense, but it's still not enough to make him as excited for the trade as the others. He ain't the best defender now, and that's the Lakers' problem. You gotta have some athletic guys that can play some defense and Luka, he can score with the best of them, but we also know you gotta take beers out of his hand. He gonna be good, but he ain't gonna be what you need. The Lakers are structured in such a way that everyone contributes especially in the defensive end, and Donich has been known to not be very effective in that department. Lucky for him, he is surrounded by great talent in the Mavs, including the recent acquisition of Clay Thompson. Furthermore, if the 17-time NBA champion still think he is the ideal replacement for the future Hall of Famer, they'd probably have to break the bank and a lot of future picks to get him. Luka Donich, on the other hand, would most likely remain in Dallas due to his upcoming Supermax contract extension.
Luka Donich and Nikola Jokic teaming up is not feasible, according to an NBA insider. The idea of two of the best European imports, an MVP winner and a scoring champion, in the NBA playing together sounds appealing, as Mavs legend Dirk Nowitzki touted. Both superstars have shown great chemistry in the past, from playing together at All-Star Games and even the recent Memorial Game. As a result, ESPN's Tim McMahon discussed the possibility on the Hoop Collective podcast, noting that a trade between the teams is highly unlikely due to limited assets. The Mavericks and Nuggets both have restricted draft capital, further complicating any potential trade. They're buddies. Every All-Star game, they're playing pranks on each other. I don't see either one happening. The Nuggets don't have the assets to pull off a blockbuster trade, certainly one that would have to be historic to get Luka Doncic. The same thing goes for Dallas. Lakers insider suggests LeBron James will make them revisit a potential trade for Jonas Valanciunas. The Los Angeles Lakers may not have given up on landing Jonas Valanciunas, according to Jovan Buha. On his Q&A show, he noted that the Lakers might revisit a trade for Jonas Valanciunas, as the player was one of the names on LeBron James' list of prospects the Lakers should try for. There was some interest, obviously. He was on LeBron's list, so I think the Lakers will probably revisit that. But I don't think there's as much interest as a guy like a Wendell Carter or some of these other guys that have popped up. So, I view it more as more of a mid-to-low tier trade target for them. Jonas Valanciunas recently signed for the Washington Wizards in free agency. The deal was for three years, $30 million. The Lakers might decide to take a chance and trade for him, as his contract is affordable for them, and they wouldn't have to give up too much for him. At the same time, if he is a player that LeBron James wants, there is a good chance that the Lakers pull the trigger on the trade. James is the leader of the franchise, and the Lakers will want to keep him happy in the years to come as they have invested so much into his tenure with the franchise. On top of that, the Wizards are looking to move Valanciunas when he becomes trade-eligible during the course of the season. Of course, the Lakers are not the only team interested in him, and they would face competition from other teams in the NBA, especially as they move closer to the trade deadline. What would Valanciunas bring to the Lakers? Valanciunas is an interesting option for the Lakers, as he could help maximize their lineup. Anthony Davis famously doesn't enjoy playing center and prefers playing the power forward position instead. Landing a stretch big like Valanciunas would allow AD to play his preferred position, with a big who can shoot the three, would undoubtedly make the Lakers a better team. Last season with the Pelicans, Valanciunas averaged 12.2 points, 8.8 rebounds, and 2.1 assists, and helped the Pelicans reach the playoffs through the play-in tournament. But his lack of defense is a concern, which will force Anthony Davis to step up on the defensive end of the court to make up for that. Davis, despite being more comfortable at power forward, prefers to defend the interior, even though he is a good perimeter defender, and as such, could step up as the makeshift interior defender while Valanciunas' responsibility is mostly limited to rebounding and performing at the offensive end of the court. The Lakers may want to evaluate all of their options before making a move for the Lithuanian big, as they might find better alternatives in the market. Making a trade for the sake of a trade is a mistake the Lakers have made in the past, and they should avoid repeating the same mistakes. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Jonas Valanciunas? Leave your opinion in the comments.